Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 4-2, be ready in season and out of season to preach the word. So one of my favorite things to do on vacation is do ministry with local evangelists. And the video that you're about to see is just that. It is a video of an interaction that I had during the first Friday outreach with Apologia Church. I was out uh, with Pastor Zach Morgan from Apologia and his team in Arizona on my vacation. And so out, be ready in season and out of season means be ready when it's convenient and be ready when it's inconvenient. And although this is one of my favorite things to do, uh, especially on vacation, uh, it would have qualified for the out of season, no doubt. Um, so the things that I want you to pick up on in this video, this apologetic encounter, uh, is something that I uh, have done for a long time, but what was really made clear as I was checking out uh, C.R. Cowley's book, uh, The Doctrine of Balaam. And in this book, uh, one of the footnotes, uh, Pastor Cowley mentions that we can use natural revelation to reason to the spiritual. And one of the places that you see that done is in John chapter 3. Uh, Jesus says in verse 8, uh, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And so what Jesus does to show uh, how the new birth works and how uh, you don't know when and where this, the Spirit is going to strike and bring conversion. Uh, he reasons from the natural world of the wind blowing. <clears throat> and even then he says uh, to Nicodemus, I've told you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will I teach you of, of spiritual things? And so we see that as we reason from the, the, the supernatural. If I want to talk about the law of God, I can say God has, has created his moral law in the same way that he has ordered the universe according to certain essential laws. And this is the, the, the example from the doctrine of Balaam. He, he talks about if, if I go up on a building and, and try to defy the law of gravity, there are consequences for that. How much more than if I defy God's moral law, will there not also be consequences for that? So you use the supernatural, uh, or the natural, rather, to reason to the supernatural, the reasoning from the lesser to the greater, as it were. Um, and so in this video, you'll see that uh, as I reason about earthly things, I talk about uh, breaking a window in the same way that James, um, in James 2, 10 and 11, talks about breaking one part of the moral law. Um, James 2.10, he says, For whoever keeps the whole law but yet stumbles at one point becomes guilty at all, of all. For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not commit murder. Now if you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. And so in my apologetics with this young man, uh, Daniel, that you're about to see, I reason... Uh, about natural things, uh, breaking a window. I also reason about uh, committing an assault against him and then reason to what it would be like to break uh, God's law. So I use the natural to get to the supernatural, and, and that is a, a biblical method used by Jesus, as we've said in John 3. Uh, you'll also see some stuff. One of the first <clears throat> apologetics, evangelistic, uh, kind of formalized things that I studied was uh, Ray Comfort's Way of the Master, uh, Way of the Master from Living Waters Ministries. Uh, the video I watched is actually online from Living Waters Europe. And so you'll see some of the Way of the Master things in there. I think um, the, uh, very early in the, in the encounter, I asked the young man, what do you think uh, happens after you die? And that's right out of uh, Ray Comfort's uh, textbook and his his manual, as it were. Um, and so so you'll also see some shades of uh, presuppositional, presuppositionalism. It's, uh, I'm not a master of that apologetic yet, but uh, you'll see some shades of that. And I, in all of these things, what I, what I want to impress upon you is that it's important 
to have a mixed arsenal whenever you go out to do evangelism, whenever you do apologetics. Um, there's some people who are, I'm presuppositional only, or I'm only way of the master, or I only use evidences. Um, and that's really, a, um, that's really a, a bad way of going about it. Um, there is, there, the Spirit will lead you in your conversations with people that, that you need to be prepared for all sorts of things that could come up. Um, and, and so to have this mixed bag, this mixed arsenal, uh, uh, you think about it like a toolbox of various tools that you can pull, pull out and use to reason with the unbeliever. Um, because people are different, they're people. And so whenever you're evangelizing or doing apologetics, you're talking to an actual person and each one of us is different and has different proclivities. And I picture everything goes back. We love back. you as a neighbor to yes, share but the most very important message back, that you will ever hear, my dear friend. Right, because that's you being born. That's how I honestly picture it. So please, as my, know, my brothers, and is that, just, to stand is up that the truth? And share God's is words with you. Yeah. I don't know. My well, friend, this I, is something I'm thinking about. Honestly. I cry out to you one really more know, time tonight. Honest, but I was just thinking, what if that really happened? Is God working on your heart through Do you think we can know the truth? Is he drawing you to the feet of his son, Jesus Christ? Like, is there a way of finding out somehow? Yeah, like the truth, just any, any truth. Like, are, are, I am the can, we know, of life. can we know for whoever sure whether things are true or not? <laughs> and whoever uh, believes in me because, shall uh, never thirst. I know some people oh, say, what happens when you die? How do you know? Like, we died before and came back. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. What because it? if so, then... I will never I mean, cast out. This is crazy. Yeah, there, that's, like some people say, well, it's like dying. That's probably because they have experienced it. But I've come down from heaven not to do I think so, but I don't know. Is there that was a near death experience? Because I know when you die, you most likely are going to die. You can come back, but I think that's probably a near death experience. No, I mean, you can't die and come back maybe a day or so later. But I think more of a near death experience is... Almost dead at that moment, the father, you come back to the Son, and maybe a few and days later, maybe that's more of a, I would say that's more of a death. Than have eternal life. What, what do you think if somebody, if somebody died and then came back from the dead, do you think they would be able to speak authoritatively on what happens after you die? Like in detail of it? Yeah. I think so. Um, I think they would say that, like usually I think uh, from movies and they usually they see the light, they go into the light, but then they come back. I picture as a spirit, I can picture as either everything's dark, but there's God a light to walk through it. That's usually how I Good picture night. it. What if someone was enough, but yeah. What if someone was dead for like three days and then came back and they were like all the way dead? Do you think they would know what happened? Like what? Well, are, they in the, are they in the grave? Are they? Yeah, they're in the or? grave. They're all dead. And so. Well, um, I mean, if they were in the, let's say, in their grave, and they woke up and they're in their grave, they'll probably think, "Where am I?" Well, like, I would they remember. would they be able to come back and tell us this is what happens when you die? I think so. It's up to them, honestly. They could choose to tell what it was like for them or not. Maybe it was too scary. They don't want to talk about. Maybe it was. It's it's so very we were, interesting to talk about. We it just depends on the person if they want to, because maybe it was very scary for them, and they're like, I don't really want to talk about me dying mm -hmm. and me coming back, and all. maybe it was scary or something. So th there's one person definitively who is who is died, spent three days in the grave, and then came back to life. That's I'm that's Jesus. that's that is yeah. Jesus. That's a historical. That's a fact. Like yeah, that's yeah, indisputable. And so in his work, or he he himself said that. The wicked will, will resurrect again. Everybody's going to raise again the wicked to a resurrection of judgment, and, and the and the righteous to to their father's rest, to God's kingdom, to to heaven, and and to eventually the new earth. Yeah. So, are, are you a good person? Are you righteous? Or are you wicked? Um, what would consider you right, and what would consider you wicked? Well, what do you think? What do you think is a fair standard to judge people by? Do you think the ten? I don't really judge people. Well, you you're not you're not the judge. You know, neither am I. Like. I, I would I would argue that God is the judge and that yeah. He must judge us because God's good. Would you want a judge that was a bad judge and just let people like Adolf Hitler get get off free? No, I don't think so. No, I wouldn't either no. because because he's he's. I mean, we could probably both agree that he's pretty wicked and cruel, right? I mean, killing millions of people, killing his political enemies. If he was able to prove he had redemption, if he didn't, he killed himself, right? Yeah. So I'd, if I, he didn't kill himself and if he had a change of heart. Trapped, yeah. Someone like him, yeah, he, he's not good, but if he lived long 
enough to maybe change, maybe if he is willing to make good deeds, if he makes good deeds good enough, so they have to be good enough to, shop, to, make, uh, to put his bad stuff in the shadow. So he has to be good, he has to do good things if he did good enough, but because he didn't live long enough to maybe seek redemption, he's a bad person. So do you, you think your bad deeds make, or your good deeds make up for your bad deeds? Uh, it depends how much of the good, uh, it depends how much deeds you make. If you make more bad deeds than good, then you're wicked. But if you make more good deeds than bad, then you're then you're not wicked. But it also depends on what your deeds are. Okay, okay. If you do a bunch of bad things, but you do this one good thing that may have been so good that literally just one could be like tops over all the bad things you've done. It just depends on what you make. What if I okay, I, I'm not gonna do this. But what if I smacked you in the face? knocked you down and gave, then I pulled a hundred dollars out of my pocket and gave it to you. Does that make up for the fact that I just assaulted you? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I never, I never had that happen to me, so I can't really say, because I can't predict the future of that happens, but well, who, if that happens, um, I'd feel that I already would hurt a bit. What do you but think? it also depends who hit me. But. What do you think the law of the state of Arizona would say? If I assaulted you without your permission, then just whipped out a hundred and I'm like, we're good. Do you think I'd that always say that's that's assault and you can't do that. Even if you say no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. You probably would still say that's that's still assault. So does any amount of money make up for the fact? Does it make it not happen that I assaulted you? No, I don't think it really matters, really. So if we use God's law, the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. And we sin against Him. Like, have you ever told a lie? Yes, I think everyone's told a lie, kind of. Maybe but, not Jesus. But, but you uh, have, you have though, right? Yeah, I have. Because I mean, I have too. You're right. Everyone has. Our our tongues are 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 are, we, are full of lies. You know, we're yeah. we we do that. We we're sinners. Um, so that's that's one of God's Good commandments. Evening, that's the ninth. That's the ninth commandment of God's God's standard for judging us. Have you ever time. taken something that wasn't yours, years. no matter how small? Uh, it could be just uh, one of your brothers or sisters. Yeah. Have you ever just taken something? As my brother said earlier, 10 out of 10 people will die one day. And when you step into the tree, the question is, is are you ready? Are you ready to stand before God who is only and just and demands absolute perfection? Are you ready to have every thought, word, and deed played out before you on that day? Are you ready to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Which every one of us will on that day when we die of Christ's return. We come here with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't steal. That that one time when I was there really young. Yeah, yeah. So when you were you stole it one time. So you broke the law one time, the eighth commandment, right? Yeah. So you broke it though. Yes. Okay, so, so that's two. You lied and you stole. Yes. Okay, have you ever have you ever uh, used God's name like a cuss word like like OMG or like if I that you are dead like, you know, like God some people Christ. say, God dang it, or, or that something that we like that. Um, you ever done anything like that? I have, but I mostly say, I'm the Lord gosh, thy God, like yeah, God, that's God, that's God, God, I don't really say that. They were talking about that back then, but they were talking about, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, goodness. That's good. That's good. Do you go to church every Sunday? Every Sunday? Yeah. No, I don't. But I used to back then. I mean, back then, not every Sunday, but I remember Grandma would take me and my older brother to the American Christ. They used to dance to church. church. That you're worshiping um, something other a, than the I one mean, God boring, but I didn't know there. Because why not? I had to. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven so, image. So, so God, God's law, His fourth commandment tells us above, that every that every seventh day we're supposed to work for six days, and then the seventh day is supposed to be devoted just to Him. And so that's called when we don't do that. It's called profaning the Sabbath. And so if you, you, you've done that, I've done that, and so so we so we you've broken you've broken commandments against God and your neighbor. So are, so by God's standard, you've broken His law, right? So if He judges you, would you be innocent or guilty of breaking the law? Well, well, Jesus's little brother James, he said, if we break one commandment, we break all of them. 
we're guilty. So which? Yeah. 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 It's like it's like uh, if I go over to one of these windows and I throw a tiny little rock and break a hole in it, I got to replace the whole pane of glass, right? It's just like that with God's law. And so, so if we're guilty, we already established that our good deeds. If I smack you, I still assaulted you. It doesn't matter if I pull out a hundred bucks. It's an even bigger deal if we smack God yeah, by breaking his law. Does that make sense? And so what we need is we need somebody to make it so so it's like we never sinned. We need someone to take away our guilt, but we don't just need to have our deeds forgiven. We need to be righteous before God because only the righteous, remember, will enter heaven. So the way that that happened is that Jesus Christ was born a little baby and he lived he lived the, the life that you should have lived and, and died the death that you should have died so that you could be made new, that you could be righteous. 1 Corinthians uh, 5.21 says that God made, made him who knew no sin. That means that Jesus didn't ever sin. There was, he never told a lie. He, he, he was always kind to his neighbor. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for you so that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. That means that if you, if you stop trusting whatever else in this world that you could be trusting, whatever is the most important thing to you, whatever you think, if I have that, I'll be happy. If you stop trusting that, stop trusting yourself and trusting Jesus Christ, in, in him for your satisfaction, then you could be made new. Does that make sense? I think so. So you're basically saying that he could give us a chance to be made again, but we have to trust him. Yeah. But his Holy Spirit works on you. So like, so like, even even after our talk right now, you might go home and you might think, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But if his Holy Spirit comes, comes to you, he will make you new. And then you will want to trust him. And so if you, if you feel the spirit like leading you or, or calling to you it, 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 I don't know how to describe it because it's but don't harden your heart that means like don't rebel against don't rebel against God's commands you know don't re and, and seek him because it there's it says in the book of Hebrew that two things are true of God that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him yeah and and he's a good God that gives gifts he delights to give his children gifts, and he gives the Holy Spirit to anybody that asks. Have you used God's name as a curse word? Understand that there is a broad road today that leads to destruction. I guess maybe if you follow the laws, he gives you gifts. No. What I'm trying to say is, is that if you seek God, He will be found by you when you seek Him with all your heart. But I'm saying that God will will enable you to do that too. God, God. God, once we get saved, God makes us love his commandments. So instead of like, oh no, I better not lie, it's like, wow, I can tell the truth now. And instead of, instead of, uh, instead of, I better not steal, it's, wow, I can give to other people and benefit other people. And instead of, and instead of oh, it's Sunday, I got to go to church, it's like, I'm excited to go hear what God has to say. And so he changes you so that the law, which was meant to, to crush you and show you yourself, to show you how sinful you are, it's like a mirror. It's like an ugly person or, or someone with a big zit going up to a mirror. And so the law is, is that mirror. And so you go up to the mirror and you pop the zit. Does that make sense or am I confusing you now? It's like meant to show you yourself. It's not... It's not meant to, like, I got to keep the Ten Commandments so I can get into heaven. It's meant to show me that I can't keep the Ten Commandments. And there's no way I can do it. And that's why I need Jesus. And, and if you feel uh, if you feel him acting on you, what you want to do is you want to call out to him because it says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay. What's your name? We've been talking this whole time. My name is Daniel. You? I'm Nathaniel. Nathaniel? Yeah, I'm from Ohio. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm from uh, California. California? Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to go home tomorrow, so... Okay. Uh, I want to say earlier, I had to get going at 8.15, but I didn't want to talk about Jesus. I just want to talk about it, but yeah. I got to get going. All right.
right. This Make sure you the, check out the track. Do you have a Bible at home, Daniel? No, but my uh, people my don't dad, like their sin uncle, to be exposed. And, uh, so instead of facing the reality of what it is, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Make sure you, you, you open this up, read it. Are there scripture references in this one? To take the gospel tracks that we are handing out. Yeah, so anywhere you see a, a, a scripture reference, go look that up in the Bible, re read it. Oh, those are ten yeah, that, right there. Oh, I read those before. Yeah. Don't steal, don't lie. Uh, be respectful, be nice. There's something about you. Uh, Here's one of my cards. If you go on that website, it should still be set up uh, where you can look for my name. My last name's Porter. If you need anything, or if you, if you go to get connected with a church, Apology of Church is a good church, too. Okay. All right, Daniel, thanks for talking.